Okay, hello everybody. I'm here with Amy today. Hello, Amy. Hi, Karen. Hi, Karen. Hi everyone. <laughs> Amy's going to listen <laughs> to a little story, aren't you, Amy? Uh, yes, that's right, Karen. I was just telling Amy because we've just been, you know, the, the, the videos that have grabbed me lately are, well, the one about Twitter is quite good as well, but that's not out yet. But, um, the and and the Irish one's out tomorrow, but this will go out after it's out, Amy. <laughs> Crazy, yes. that, isn't it? But the Irish one and the one I did with Alan about uh, syntax law, you know, and, and and the one in Ireland sort of runs into the, the whole thing because he's talking about the dead entity and all that, so they understand all that. And on that, we were talking about kings and queens, and I was thinking, well, maybe, and I told you this person did much more and. They just, they, I read, they, they didn't put her in history because, you know, obviously Victoria, there was a story about her, but this one didn't, you know, she just didn't, she wasn't very exciting and all that. But when you realise what she did, I think it's a completely different story. Yes. You might have to, yeah. Yeah, you might have to find two bits of it, but I just, so I just read this little bit and obviously, Amy, then you can then say something. Um, <laughs> if you don't look into this closely, you'd be forgotten, I mean, forgiven for thinking we only had three queens. Queen Victoria and Elizabeth's, perhaps the least celebrated in the line of overlooked women, is Queen Anne, 1702 to 1714, was the woman who unifi um, unite, no, unified England and Scotland, took ownership of Gibraltar and helped galvanise Britain's maturing two-party political system. Well, I'd say that's quite a lot, don't you, Amy? Oh, it is. And when I looked it up, it said that um, she get her time on the throne changed Britain forever. It says Queen Anne, the younger daughter of James II, is often overlooked by historians. Yet her time on the throne, seventeen o two to fourteen, changed Britain forever. So just Why that one statement. So yeah, they, they obviously it looks like Victoria did a lot of change. But she obviously yeah. didn't, and even Buckingham Palace—it was made before she. It was changed before she moved in, and she bought it from someone else. But then it became the house where, uh, you know, the, the 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 royals live or are supposed to live. Um, yeah. That's crazy, isn't it? When she's done so much. I mean, this bit again. She unified England and Scotland, took ownership of Gibraltar, helped galvanise Britain's maturing two-party political system. I think that's quite a lot. It, it sure is. That's that's an awful lie. I mean, when did they say anything nice? I mean, what could they say nice about Boris or Putin or or oh, um, Biden or Trump? Really? Come on. That's right. With jokes. And I'll read this a yeah. more. It says, um, despite this, the fleeting reign of a shy, overweight Brandy Nan. What's oh my God? Anyway, she reigned for twelve years. That's not. That's. It's not fleeting, is it, 12 years? Right. I mean, it's not as long as Queen Elizabeth or something, but it's still a good amount of time. Yeah. Right? And, it, I mean, we don't even know how long Charles is going to last, do we? That's true. So if he lasted five years, what are we going to say? That um, uh, he, it was he, was, fleeting. he was really <laughs> fleeting. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's just ridiculous. But um, it says... Um, Basically, she's been dismissed by historians. Why? Oh, I know. She sounds an amazing woman because they're not saying anything bad about her. Exactly. Right, That's... what else does it say? Um, there's a little bit more. I think they've obviously taken it from a book because there's a biographer here. Whoops. Oh, okay. If you could blame anyone for I'm snubbing through history, it would be far... Most famous biographer and former friend, Sarah Church. Oh, no, 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 that doesn't really. Yeah. Anne's death did little to soften her ex friend. I don't know. I think that's about the woman. Anyway, that's. Yeah, that's. The re yeah, there's a bit more here. Modern day medical experts. Or, no, I think that's something else. <laughs> oh. oh, it's the monarch. <laughs> okay, so why is that in there? Oh, she had a form of lupus, which can cause chronic arthritis, repeated miscarriages, and joint pains in the hands and legs. Blighted oh. with ill health, Anne's life was filled with tragedy, 
Some historians believe she suffered from depression following so much bereavement from an early age. By the time she was 16, she'd lost her mother, her favourite governess, and six siblings. Poor. Some of this may help to explain the intense attachment she developed towards chosen women throughout her life, something her father James II noted and greatly disapproved of. From 1685 to 1700, Anne lost 17 children. Oh, my God. Oh, that's horrible. Wow. I mean, in a way, she's a hero, isn't she? Even trying. Yes, she is. Through yeah, that would have done me yeah. Oh, sorry, Amy, carry on. Oh, I just said that would, that would have done me in. So that's really amazing that yeah. she could hold up against all about above all of that and, and do as much as she did and do yeah. all that she did. Assuming that this is some history about her and not all made up like it usually is. But anyway, no, right. through miscarriage, stillbirth and disease during infancy and childhood, her final devastation came when Prince William, her last surviving heir, died in 1700, aged 11. This event is said further cemented her emotional dependence on Sarah. It would probably also contribute to her love of brandy. Mm. And then Anne devout Protestant faith persuaded her to break with her father James II, was deposed in 1688, glorious revolution with her blessing to be replaced by the joint rule of Anne's sister Mary II and her husband. Ah, so that, all right, okay, just carry on. William of Orange, ah, who Anne despised. When yeah. William died in 1702, Mary had eight year, Mary had eight years earlier and became queen aged 37. Unlike her best friend Sarah and her sister Mary, Gregorious sister Mary, Anne was painfully shy and struggled famously in conversation. While her staff could script her speeches, the moment things went off script, Anne was said to fall apart. Oh, God. Well, you know all this stuff about her, do they? And physically destroyed by 18 pregnancies. Uh, and uh, has, it, has it just grown? I thought it was 17. It says uh, she lost 17. That... She must have had one then, anyway. Just, it says eight, it said 17, and now it says 18, but never mind. What I'm looking at says um, it was pregnant 18 times between 1683 and 1700. Only five children were born alive, and of these, only one, a son, Let survived. Go. Yes. They said lost 17 children, had 18 pregnancies. Yeah. And also suffered from gout and severe near sight, uh, sightedness. Modern day medical experts also suspect she had a form of lupus, which can cause chronic arthritis, repeated miscarriages and joint pain and um, pain in her hands and legs. So Sarah was her friend. Um, yeah. I don't know. Anne died in 1714. A stroke had rendered her unable to speak. She'd been unable to walk for months and her body was so swollen she had to be buried in a, in a, in a vast square-shaped coffin. Oh, no. Well, how big was she then? Yeah, that's awful. Wow. Yeah. Maybe she was a giant too. But anyway, despite yeah. her misfortunes, many of which sadly learnt themselves to ridicule, and achieved a great deal in her 12-year reign. And without it, Britain, as we know it today, would not exist. Oh, so really, she's a baddie, isn't she? Well, yeah, when you put it that way. Yes, when you put it that way. And the monarch, through Sarah's biography, portrayed Anna's week. Oh, yeah, OK, because this is UK, so obviously following a book. She actually yeah. wielded considerable power during her reign, as demonstrated by Sarah's own um, ex expulsion from the court. It was Anne who finally achieved the unification of England and Scotland in 1707, something England had been chasing for centuries. Cool, I wonder how she did that then. We might have to just quickly look that up. Anyway, Anne led, led England's fight into the War of Spanish Succession, which lasted her entire reign. Wow, so yeah. she was at war the whole time as well. Yes. She was in emergency law, Amy. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> um, following England's military success throughout the war, the UK received Gibraltar in its final settlement 
I never saw well because that's a gateway, isn't it, Gibraltar? Right. Yeah. It goes into the Mediterranean and it's got. Well, yeah. It's a bit between, you know, Spain and Morocco or Algiers, yeah. whichever country, whichever one's in front of it. Can't think now. Well, both of them. Yeah, I think that's right. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, um, where are I? I've lost it. Anne oversaw huge development in Britain's two-party political system, which first the Whigs and then the Tories obtaining dominance. Again, Sarah's role in it failed power by grab by the Whigs was a major factor in her final fall from grace, though she failed to produce an heir. She failed yeah. to produce an heir. Yes, because I think the baby, the boy child died. Right. Anne ultimately left the country for more stable and united than when she took it on. Anne ultimately left the country far more... St oh, I see when she died. Right, we'll just read a little bit more. There's a little bit more. Oh, so did she actually have lesbian lovers? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> we probably will never know. This was a time when sexuality was not clearly defined. Oh, we'll leave that bit. You can just read that bit. Stop the video and read it. If you want, yeah. is that the end? I've got ears and everything. That's the end. All those things there. Well, that was interesting. Can we just? So yeah. Just... Hang on, Amy. We're just going to look something up. So, what she did, she made United Kingdom. That's what she did. It says just it said it when we were coming in, isn't it, Amy, on the bit? So she made yeah. the United Kingdom. Well, we'll read a bit, but Amy's going to say something, aren't you, Amy? Yes. Um, it said that Queen Anne oversaw the Treaty of Union and the Acts of Union, bringing England and Scotland together under a single Parliament of Great Britain. She reigned from 1702 to 1714. The 18th century was a time of radical change across Britain. So that's uh, how she did it, I guess, through this treaty that was then passed in Parliament, or that brought that brought England and Scotland under one Parliament, the same yeah, Parliament. Yeah, you know what? She was the last of the Stuarts. They sound Scottish, yeah. don't they? Yes. I don't think James the Second was. I think he was a dark skinned person. Remember we did them? Oh yes, I remember. I can't remember that. if it was the first one or the second one, but you know, anyway, and even probably Henry the Eighth was, so was Elizabeth the First, and so was Mary. Darker skinned people. Oh yes. I mean if you actually look at Queen Victoria's son, the one that came to power after she died, um you he looks very Indian like in some of the pictures. She's got very dark skin, but anyway. Yeah. Grey looking skin. But anyway, that's good. We want to go on a little bit. Um, but somebody that looks ill, some of these paintings are a bit nicer of her. So that's about oh. Anne. Yeah, sorry, going, going on. Uh, there's adverts everywhere. The story. Doesn't talk anything about the government. Oh, the government bit. Just flipped back up. Sorry about that. Now, what's that? The Battle of Blenheim. I'll oh. read that bit. It says, oh, it's Blenheim Palace. Oh, we did oh. that one, Amy. Do you remember it? It looks like a Roman Empire place. I'll show, you the, I'll show you the picture and then we'll read the bits. There you go. We've done that one. I mean, look at it. It's much nicer than Buckingham Palace. Oh, yeah. And that's kind of what Buckingham Palace looked like before they built, because they built the bits like on here and they built it round and most people don't realise that that's behind the front bit. Anyway. Yeah. It says, the Queen was with tears running down her cheeks, gave Peak a miniature of herself on a thousand right. The year 1740, there was another great victory of Ramillies, Ramillies, yeah, followed by another at whatever that place is, Odenbard. Odenard, rather, in 1808, and that's Maple, whatever that is. I'm sorry, I'm just, just, anyway, that's 1709. These are wars. Um, To show the Queen's appreciation, Anne and the Parliament gave, well, yeah, gave the Parliament the Duke of Marlborough land at Woodstock in Oxfordshire and built him a magnificent house called Blenheim Palace. Right. Another famous member of the Churchill family, Churchill 
sorry, Winston Ch Spencer Churchill was born there in 1874. Oh, wow. Well. Blimey. It's beautiful, oh, okay. this place. If that's what you build for someone, God. <laughs> yeah. In seven, 1704, the English captured Gibraltar and the Treaty of whatever that is in 1713 ensured that England had a permanent foothold on the Spanish mainland. The reign of Anne, oh yeah, because they were fighting with the Spanish. The reign of Anne yeah. was a brilliant one, and one which included many exceptionally talented men. Swift, Pope, Addison and Steele were writing prose and verse. Sir Christopher Wren was finishing the building of St Paul's Cathedral, and Locke and Newton were propounding their new theories. The United, the United Kingdom of Great Britain, was create was created during her reign by the Union of England and Scotland. That's all it's really going to say. That's it. Yeah. I wonder yeah. If I press that. What happens? Yeah. One second, Amy. I'm going to press it. We'll see what happens. Oh wow! Well, that's really fascinating. The United Kingdom of Scotland and England had been proposed for hundreds of years before. It actually happened in 1707. So you come along a bit later with the uh, corporation called Independence Day. That's <laughs> right. The <laughs> and mistrust between the two countries had prevailed the Union throughout the 17th century. The Scots feared that they would simply become another region of England being swallowed up as happened to Wales some 400 years earlier. For England, the fear that the Scots may take sides with France and rekindle the Ord alliance was this, uh, this, this, I can't say it, decisive, yeah, I couldn't say it. England relied heavily on Scottish soldiers and to have them turn down ranks with the French would have been disastrous. In the late 1690s, however, Scotland, sorry, thousands of ordinary Scottish folk had been tempted to invest their hard-earned money in a plan to link um, the two great oceans of the world by establishing an over-trading route between the Pacific and Atlantic. Almost every Scot who had five pounds in their pocket invest invested in the Doreen scheme to establish a Scottish Scottish colony in panorama wow come on what is this on about let's come on <laughs> yeah. um poorly named the venture ended in 1700 with significant loss of life and financial ruin for the kingdom of scotland with many influential individuals and whole families left bankrupt by the disaster wow have you ever heard that before no, I've never heard that. <laughs> a few financial incentives appear to have convinced some dithering Scottish MPs of the potential benefit of a union with England. In the words of Robert Burns, they, the Scottish MPs, were brought and sold um, for English gold. Well, wow, let's go okay. to the next bit. In... A poorly attended Scottish Parliament, the MPs voted to agree the Union on the 16th 17, January 1707. The Act of Union was signed. The Act. So basically, you know, they've had Ireland with the potato famine. They got so poor, three quarters of the people moved out. Then you've got this happening, something bankrupting the country. So they were basically forced to join with England. Yeah, I think so. And um, it said that uh, the Scottish kind of wanted to go through with it so that they would have um, have a better time, and that um, they used Scottish um, Scottish soldiers. They had them stationed there. I mean, not Scottish, I'm sorry, English soldiers, to kind of encourage them. It says, the Scottish proponents of union believe that failure to agree to the articles would result in the imposition of a union under less favorable terms, and English troops were stationed just south of the Scottish border, 
and also in Northern Ireland as a, quote, encouragement. Months of fierce debate in both capital cities and throughout both kingdoms followed. In Scotland, the debate on an occasion dissolved into civil disorder, most notably by the notorious Edinburgh mob mob. Um, the prospect of a union of the kingdoms was deeply unpopular among the Scottish population at large, and talk of an uprising was widespread. However, the treaty was signed, and the documents were rushed out with a large military escort. And then the Kingdom of Great Britain was born on the 1st of May, 1707, shortly after the parliaments of Scotland and England had ratified the Treaty of Union by each approving acts of union combining the two parliaments and the power of the two crowns. Scotland's crown, scepter, and sword of state remained at Edinburgh Castle and Queen Anne, already queen of both England and Scotland, formerly, formally became the first occupant of the United Throne of Great Britain, with Scotland sending 45 members to the new House of Commons of Great Britain, as well as representative peers to the House of Lords. So that kind of explained that. So it sounds like um, maybe some of the Scottish didn't want to be part of the union. No, it really sounds like uh, now we've bankrupted you, Junior, on your knees. <laughs> you've got a son. Yeah, yes, exactly. But she was yes. Queen of Scotland. How did she let that happen? Yeah, I don't know. It and says here, right. Scotland kept its independence with respect to its legal and religious systems, but coinage, well, there wasn't any uh, with religious systems. It's all one. But anyway, but coinage, taxation, sovereignty, trade, parliament and a flag became one. The Red Cross of St. George combined with the Blue Cross of St. Andrew, resulting in the old Union flag. This is probably called the Union Jack, although, strictly speaking, this only applies when it's flown on the jack staff of a warship. Other than that, it's the Union flag. And then that's just not our, you know, you don't think of it in Union, you think of it as the United Kingdom. See? Yes, it's exactly. only the United Kingdom when it's on a ship. Other than that, it's the Union flag. Ah, oh, it's just ridiculous, isn't it? The Union I flag. Did. Sorry, Amy, carry on. Oh, no, I was just going to agree with what you said. <laughs> that's, that's all. The Union flag that we recognise today did not appear until 1801 after another. 1776, see, that's when you got your fake independence. Well, it wasn't independence, but <laughs> after another act of union, when the old flag combined with the Red Cross of St. Patrick of Ireland, by 1850, approximately 40% of the total world trade was conducted through and by the Union United Kingdom. God, look at that. 40% of the total world trade was conducted through and by the United Kingdom, making it the most successful economic union in history. By the time Glasgow had grown from a small market town on the River Clyde into the second city of the English Empire, 2007 marked the 300th year of the Act of Union between England and Scotland. A commemorative £2 coin was issued and rah rah rah. Wow! I know! I think that's it. Yeah, that's the end. That is just... Well, anyway, we're going back now, Amy, so one second. Picked out of there. So it says, Anne herself created Anne, Queen Anne's bount bounty, which restored to the church of the income of poor clergy, a fund raised from the thrifts which Henry VIII had um, taken out for his own use. Yeah, because they were all one. Anyway, having endured right. ill health most of her life, Queen Anne died after suffering a stroke in 1714 at the age of 49. Oh, my gosh. She wasn't uh, old at all. Yeah, she was she, young. She managed to, for a person that they said she was very shy, for someone who's yeah. very shy, she managed to do a hell of a lot. She sure did. <laughs> do you think they try and leave her out? Because we go, there's the person that did it. <laughs> that may be so. Anyway, it says, um, Queen Anne does not enjoy the same place in history as Queen Elizabeth, uh, sorry, in history as other queens of England, perhaps because she lacked the charisma of Mary I and Elizabeth I and Victoria, yet in her reign, great deeds were done. 
I've never heard of anything so ludicrous. Just because she might not have been so charismatic as the rest, we don't remember. None of us knew Victoria, did we, to know how charismatic she was? So all we want is the history. That is such a pathetic answer. I've never known anything so pathetic in my life. Oh, me neither. I know. Yeah, in her reign, deeds were done. Yeah, deeds. Horrible deeds. During her reign, she oversaw the creation of the United Kingdom. Britain became a major military power and the foundations were laid for the 18th century golden age. Well... Wow, one second, Amy. So, she was Queen of England, Scotland and Ireland. Um, under the Acts of Union um, reign, when we know it's 12, she was the House of Stuart, Anglican. Her father was James II, father and and James the Seventh, because they were also kings in other countries, a bit like Prince Philip had titles in different countries. Yes, so that's how to do it. Yes. Yeah. So you might not realise that because they're always saying the King of England, but you exactly. see, this shows you when they're kings of two different places. That's the Roman Empire. Roman Empire. That's Roman great. Empire. <laughs> yeah, and yes. that's in the seventy sixteen hundreds. Yeah. So, Queen Anne was Queen of England, Scotland, and Ireland. Uh, she was born March, 8th of March, 1702. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. She was Queen of England from March the 8th, 1702, until May the 1st, 1707. And on May the 1st, 1707, under the Acts of the Union, the, United, the kingdoms of England and Scotland reunited as a single sovereign state known as Great Britain. Oh, that's uniting the Roman in. Real in. Real in. Anyway, Anne continued to reign as Queen of Great Britain and Ireland until her death. Yeah. She was born in St. James's Palace. Well, that was 1665, so that's how old that building is. And it's older than that. She died. Yeah. 1714 at Kensington Palace. So that shows you how old that is. Children, yes. Children, Prince William, Duke of Gloucester. More. Should we have a look, Amy? Yes. Oh, they're going to list all her children. Oh, right. There's all her children. Prince William, Duke of Gloucester. He did grow a bit. He must have died somewhere. And Sophia of Oldenburg. Joseph of Great Britain. So she did have a few children. Mary Anne of Great Britain. Yeah. So that's one, that's she, four, that's four. Second, yeah, she had five, I think. I think it said she had five out of the 18 that were born, Only, but only five of them lived. Second miscarried child of Anne of Great Britain. Joseph of Great Britain. Stillborn daughter of Anne of Great Britain. Sixth child of Anne of Great Britain. First miscarried child of Great Britain. They're giving, that's where you want to go and look at the history. Third, fourth, second, third. Wow. No, we're going back. Oh. Yeah. So, yeah. you've got some, where is it, more? So, siblings. Mary II of England, James Francis Edward Stuart. Um, oh, we're not going to more. Spouse. Prince George of Denmark. 1683 to 1708. That's when she died, isn't it? Parents, James II of England, Anne Hyde, full name Anne. Yeah. Very interesting. She must have been one, saying that she's not charismatic, she must have been one hell of a woman. Yes, she was. Yeah, she was. It sounds like she was very strong, and she she really um changed the history of she England. Got masses done in. No, she was only there for a fleeting moment, and in that well, moment, yeah. she changed everything for here. And what she did was massive. Masses of it, she did. Yeah, I know. It it sure was. She actually uh, made the United Kingdom. 
the UK. Yeah, yeah they don't. When, when they talk about the flag, they don't actually really say it's in her reign or anything, do they? You, no, don't, you don't associate that Union Jack with her. That's right. I've never associated it with her. Associated it with her. And do you know what? They don't talk about because you imagine she's a woman, and she's changing everything. She's changing yeah, she... England. I mean, they're not. I mean, imagine what she had to go through. She was quite young when she did it because she died at forty nine. So she must have been in her late eight, th eight late thirties when she did all this. I guess. Wow. Yeah, it's really amazing, eh? But you're the rotten person where we've got that Union Jack. Yes. She was obviously a lot more important than that. Yeah. Weird. It, it's, it's amazing that you thought of her. Well, because I just remembered that, that you, you know, like, she's just a bit of royalty they don't really talk about. Why? She did amazing. I mean, when I say amazing, that doesn't mean it's good. Exactly. Yeah, I'm not saying it's good, per se. But right, so speaking, what is she famous for? We'll read it again. Okay. Queen Anne, 1665 to 1714, was the last of the Stuart monarchs. And they're Scottish, aren't they? Yes. Remembered for achieving the Union of England and Scotland in 1707 and for bringing the war of the Spanish succession to a conclusion and then changing um, changing um, oh I've just forgot and then putting you know like doing the bit with the government the two-tier political system I mean I'd say that, that was a hell of a lot she did in 12 years me too wow it, it's quite remarkable that she's been taken out of history she's the reason that we're here then she is That's right. even if you don't like her she's extremely important oh i know wow your yeah. thoughts amy well i just um i never knew she was so important like this and it's just strange that they don't really talk about it I mean, she um, she really did so much, and um, it says she was the last Stuart Queen and the first to rule Great Britain. So that's a big deal. You would think that um, they'd have a special day. Oh, you mean for her. you mean because she was the first person to rule the United Kingdom? Yes, it, yeah, that's what it, it uh, when I looked it up, it said that Queen Anne was the last Stuart Queen, which would have been, I guess, because she was from that house, and the the first, so the very first to rule Great Britain. That's and, much bigger than Queen Victoria, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, the, she, she was the first Queen. Queen Victoria did, because obviously there was the Mad King, don't forget, afterwards. But then right. she, all Victoria's done is inherit it all. Exactly. And it, said, uh, it talks about how during her reign, the Act of Union was passed, uniting England and Scotland into one kingdom within one parliament, brought together under one monarch. So, yes, that's very important. <laughs> and I think you'd have a special day to celebrate her or something or at least know that she was she was actually the first oh my queen God. amy do you think do you remember what i mean i did put the video out to exp i was just so shocked my mom got this um ancestry thing yeah. but it wasn't her that did it it was some family member maybe 20 30 years ago that did it maybe before well, anyway the actual report was done in the 1800s so that's before and um, it basically said that this relative of ours, and my mum thought she was Welsh, just completely Welsh, but her family yeah. started from Scotland. And, um, right. yeah, and then they went to Wales. I mean, I'm wondering whether he was ousted. And I've actually said that this person, he was an archdeacon, was my one of my mum's relatives. Um, maybe he was a Knight Templar as well. You know, maybe he got ousted. Um, yeah. And then when he was doing all these things, he was racing all over France and then he died over there or something a year after what he did. And what he did was he king crowned King David II of Scotland. So it had to be in that time because obviously 
when you're ratified to England, you don't have your own king because the crown is the king or queen, whatever. So right. because they had King David the Second, this is before just before her. But he, oh, do you remember uh, he crowned the king, and they said after he did that, this was how all monarchs were crowned uh, were crowned now by an archdeacon. Yes, I remember that. I mean, that's quite a big change. That probably tells you about all about the Romans again. It's all about yeah. the Romans. Yeah. Yeah, people have just got such ideas. It's just one day I was just looking and I was realising that the Romans wore skirts and so did the Scottish. And even though they're different colour and one's tartan and one isn't, they all wear skirts. They're all part of the same thing. Remember they said, yeah. they said Rome never went to Scotland. But there are two walls in Scotland, so Hadrian's Wall's one, and there's another one behind, and then there's, um, you know, great big, uh, you know, Roman things there, and history's uh, yes. there, and, you know, like, uh, you're like, I thought they didn't get into Scotland, so they, you know, that was the uh, pick people, so it's just rubbish. Right. Well, I suppose yeah, it depends I mean... which, which Reich it is, because that's the other thing, the three German Reichs are the three Roman empires. Yes, that's right. Oh, it's just, anyway, she's obviously a Roman, isn't she? She's a Roman. <laughs> uh, yes, it seems that way, because it's all part of that, the Roman Empire. Yeah. That's so crazy, I know. I'm just absolutely gobsmacked that such an important person to make the United Kingdom flag that we live under is shoved under the carpet because she wasn't as charismatic as Queen Victoria. Oh, uh, me too. I'm really astonished at that. Me too. I hope you can hear that's Floss snoring in the background. Shut up. Oh. Um, <laughs> that's incredible, Amy. Come on. I, I don't it know where to incredible. put it. Yes. Yeah, that, that is incredible. That's a really good catch. Yeah, I, I saw it before. I've made a video about it before or put it in a video to show this person. And uh, it's not that you forget, but there's always so many things to move on to, so you just move on. And you know, I probably did this two or three years ago. I remember that. Yeah, she was just, in, she was just included in, you know, because I saw it in, in, when we were looking up history because they said they didn't really talk about her. Exactly, I remember that. I probably said, look, she made the Union Jack, and then you forget about things. But she's the reason that we've got the friggin' Union Jack. Ugh. And you know what that means? That's part of, that's them. Yeah, exactly. For sure. My God, what was she? She must have been, she was obviously a great big empress. Yeah, that's, I was just going to say, maybe she's so much more important than we know. That's why they sweep her under the rug. And maybe she, they, didn't, she didn't die in it. Maybe it wasn't quite like they say, because it's amazing they've got all this history about her. Oh, I know. They know all this stuff about her personal life and everything, but then they don't even tell us hardly anything. No, she's she, just... should be, she should be well up there. She should be like... If you were, you know, okay, she was only there for 12 years, but she definitely, like, all we think about is Victoria. She's probably was, well, even if you don't like her, well, I don't really like her because of what she did, but she, she's amazing. She is. So she sorted and... the military out. She sorted government out. She conquered yeah. other places to stop wars in Spain. And she sorted out the political system. She's like, wow. She's obviously had a lot of power. She sure has. But she was shy, and she when she and and when they did the speeches, that man said, "Oh no, the word said." And when she went off track, she didn't know what to say. But she saw it all out. She must have oh, been extremely clever. Yes, she, um, may, maybe she wasn't as maybe shy. Maybe this as is the real say. Victoria. You know, when they talk oh, about Queen Victoria, they're really. They use Victoria for the other stuff, but they're really talking about this person. That they've made the real one, like, like zero. And really, they're, I don't know. What do you reckon, Amy? I don't know. Uh, oh, I don't know either. But um, I know um, under the Victorians, aren't they the ones that um, they came and kind of covered everything up as far as architecture and stuff? Yeah. It just seems like they want to promote Queen Victoria all the time. Yeah, and you think that, that that Blenheim Palace looks like the original um, 
Buckingham Palace and then they built this other bit on and it said that Queen Victoria had to have it built on because of all her family moving in. You're thinking, Christ, yeah. you look at each bit and this is a house, This is, they're all put together, but it's a house upon a house upon a house upon a house. How many members of family did she have if she had to build another half a palace on? I know. <laughs> it must have been an awful lot. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> to have all that, it just, what, what do you think is why she, is the reason why she built so much one? Well, no, maybe, to... I mean, this person's not pushed because it was Queen Victoria that moved into Buckingham Palace. It probably wasn't even called that. It just, that's its name since, well, I don't know. But um, I don't know. It's just, it says, it says, Kensington Palace, and it says some other palace. Uh, yeah. I was just like, how can you leave her out of history? I know, it's just, it's really crazy. I know they, they've covered up so much history. Um, I mean, you know but we know about, about the Queen War of the Anne. Roses. That did my head in. I couldn't do it anymore because there's so oh, many I different know. answers to it. And, and, and that's a really big thing in our history, but not as big as her. Oh, I know. Yeah. Yeah. So we we um we know about her, but they just have really uh, watered down her her role in history. To say that she was the queen that uh, was shy, and um, they don't really say much about her when she's the first queen of England, and she's the one that cre you know is responsible for the treaty that brought um, Scotland and England together to be the UK. That's incredible. So, it is incredible. Yeah. Anyway, I I, I, I just I'm a bit speechless again because I have seen it, but then it's like wow. For kind of forgot about it because i said we always move on right because it's so much this is ridiculous she should have been well up there in history how can they do yes. that to someone who did so much i mean oh i know do you remember one of the kings he was expected to be king from a baby <laughs> how could he how could he control anything as a as a baby that wet itself you know like it's just ridiculous the things they said oh, about know. that king and then <laughs> some of the kings look better than others. Then we've got stuff about Henry, but I think in her, sh if you want to call it a short reign, she managed to achieve everything. She changed. It must have been the East India Company and then her. Right. Uh, that's a good point. Wow. Yeah. She's the reason we've got maritime law. Oh, that's true too. Ugh. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Maybe they don't like mentioning her too much because they really want to put their thumbs down. Boo, he's. But they don't mention her. But anyway, we just thought that we'd yeah. mention it, didn't it's, we, Amy? Yeah. Yeah, that is fascinating. Eh? Great. Another great one, catch. That? Yeah, anyway, at least you've looked it up and knew what I was talking about this time. Yeah. Exactly. Well, we always learn something new. Yeah, it's been a learnful week this week. It has. <laughs> yes, but that's really good. Keep keep learning. And also, and she was like a quick. She was really from Scotland, and she was ruling England. Oh yeah. So you know all this bit about you know how does that happen? Like. The Scots, or every, you know, the way that they portray it is the Scots want to be independent. They've got all this stuff. But really, their queen was Queen of England for a while in the 1700s. Yes. Oh, it's so but... annoying. It's just, it's out of reach to change anything. But at least we know this is the um, rotten egg <laughs> that got us the <laughs> Jack. Maritime law and everything yeah. else. Yes. <laughs> yeah. To, to find these things out. Yeah. Uh, you know, there's nothing we can do, but it's good to, to know our past. Yeah, we don't know if any of it's true exactly, do we? Because oh. it's from them. It's on Google. It's on Google. Yeah. Google. And you know that they lie, but at least we've seen something. And um, yeah. But anyway, thank yeah. you for helping me uh, do this, Amy. Oh, you're welcome, Karen. Thank you for having me. Well, that was interesting, wasn't it? Yes. 
how did we get on it? You were you looked something up, and then then we went to looking up Queen Eight because we went to well, look it up. it was the, the Union Jack. When oh that, yeah. You know, and how and then really that we were the so it was so we're only the United Kingdom, and they call us the United Kingdom all the time. So how does that work? That's because we're on a ship. Right. Okay, I right. said that courts do it. So when you go to court, your ba when you go actually into the court, you've joined a ship in dry dock. And then the judge that's judging you doesn't judge for that court, but yeah. That's that's that one. But we are yeah. we obviously we're a ship. Yes, exactly. Yeah, they make us be like we're on a ship. And with the uh, courts and everything, and they're not supposed to really do that. They're supposed to be under land, but they so use the that marriage. you got that as well. Yeah. I'd say that this woman was amazing. Oh, I, I do She's too. basically, so all the War of the Roses and Henry VIII, Elizabeth I, you know, they've got lots of hangings and all this stuff going on and wars. So they're all well in with them, but this woman... They've suppressed. She's done everything. And I they've know, suppressed it. I just think, oh, but it's because she wasn't so, um, you know, she was a bit boring. I mean, yeah, she sounds exactly. like she... Ah, and don't forget, she's ill all the time. And she's shy. Yeah. How she managed to yeah. do it is probably a lie, but um, I don't know. The bit they're showing you, that is amazing. It is. It, it really is. Yeah. Anyway... Anything else you want to say, Amy? Oh, I think that's about it. It's just very fascinating. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're always, we always learn something when your channel. So <laughs> here, good know. Queen Anne. Mm. Yes. Anyway, Amy, thank you for that. Thanks for helping me. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you, Karen. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye, everyone.